If you play a sideways <laughs> ball oh, oh or a pa- backward back pass to back to your keeper or a defender, you can hear them They're behind me. I'm like, oh, they're brutal, you know what I mean? Honestly, it's unbelievable. And football's changed after yeah. that game. I think your ambition yeah. to further your career is, to be fair, what I'm interested in. The, the idea that, you know, it's not easy for a local lad to leave a club. Fair, some of the lads used to have everything on. Jackets, yeah. bubble hats. Some, some people, gloves. in the summer... I used to wear gloves, go- actually. I used to wear gloves. Yeah, gloves. Cos your hands get cold for Yeah, I used to wear gloves. I seen Scorsese the other day complaining about the lads of the huddle. See that? <laughs> oh. Was the points where you think, this is getting difficult? I've got one goal and one purpose and not and will ever get in the way of that. My ambition is to be at the very top of football and I couldn't do that where I was. Is that not quite sort of like intense? I can't sleep though. It's like I just remember all the bad things. Which defender you dread coming up against? None. No? No. I've never said that before on like any media outlet or What things, about the so meditation and the visualisation? Yeah, yeah, no. no one knows that side to me. Ultimately, I'm so desperate to get to where I need to get to. My ambition takes control and when I get opportunities like Newcastle, I was never ever going to say no. I can't get over how tall you are by now. I've, honestly, I, I could have literally Predicted. put a bet on that you were going to say that, I swear. Everybody says anyway. it. Anyway, quick five questions. Let's do it. You were the player of the tournament in England on 21's European Championship, so here are 21 quick five questions. Let's do it. The best item of clothing you own? I'm going to say this jacket at the minute because it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love a jacket, especially with the zip. So Hoodie? Yeah, hoodie. Hoodie, hoodie jacket. Right. How many pairs of shoes do you have? Do you have a lot of trainers? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Massive sneaker head. Sneaker. Um, and we get a lot free anyway, so they just end up piling up. Why did I not have a better sponsor when I was playing football? I, I, I think my sponsor were Pony and Deodora. And I don't even know who they are, Gary, honestly. <laughs> You don't know who I am, or Pony or Theodore. <laughs> no, they've uh, stepped up the game massively. One thing that you can't live without? My phone. I'm, oh, are you? Honestly. Are I'm, you on your phone all the time? So much. I'm the ultimate iPad kid. That's what, that's what the, the name is nowadays. Do you know what I did last night? It's unbelievable, right? So I negotiated. I've got two girls, 14 and 15 years yeah. of age. They just started to go on social media. But I actually put parental restriction. Yeah, I've seen that. 30 minutes I've a day, Monday to Friday. <laughs> And then unlimited at weekends. I think that that's quite work. harsh. <laughs> I, honestly, that's what I she said. I couldn't the live oldest, later. The oldest said, "No, that's not that's not right." Do you know my thing? I need noise, so I'll have like the overlap on all, all different kinds yeah. of podcasts. And I'm not actually so much listening. It's just there. The what noise is just there. Constant noise. Yeah, like... constant noise. Jeez. It's, yeah, it's a strange habit. Wow. Favorite meal? Poor. I love Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, wow. like a sushi or. Sweet and sour chicken, that, that type of food. Sweet and sour chicken is Chinese. I know, but you can get it in a Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got one of those Sushi. sort of like multiple sort of like you get everything in one? Is yeah. It, so where's that? Where would that be in Newcastle? There's not many, to be honest. No. They could do with a few more. Favourite book? Winning by Tim Grover. So oh, he's, he's Michael Jordan's ex trainer. Right. And maybe the time that I read it that it probably meant the most to me. When did you read it? It was a time where I was coming through at Everton oh, okay. and I just needed a bit of experience, a bit of guidance on how to perform at a high level consistently. And it just gave me the, the platform and the ideas to sort of deal with the tough times and, and how to deal with them, I think. What, what, what in that book would you say you call upon as being sort of like things that you use now as a... <sighs> Absolutely, Everton. I'd love you to go and read it, but I think one thing is he talks about winning a sort of like this devilish figure who's trying to take everything from you where you have to give everything to it right. and there's no guarantee you get anything in return if that makes sense do you think a lot about this sort of you can tell you're really into yeah, it yeah yeah i read a lot and I'm, I'm into the psychology of definitely sports people but like people in general i love the psychology do you know when i think about you do you know something obviously there's all that sort of stuff when you left everton yep. and obviously I, I can imagine it understanding that a local player you know living in the city growing up there but you must have a single-minded ambitious yeah. sort of like belief because i think that that takes real courage to want to sort of go for it because it's hard it must have been hard that at the time when you were going yeah. through that yeah it's it's much harder than people perceive it to be because from the outside looking in they just think oh you want to leave that's it it's done no it's, it's of course difficult but ultimately i'm 
I'm so desperate to get to where I need to get to that my ambition takes control and when I get opportunities like Newcastle, I was never ever going to say no. When I looked at it at the time, and I think a few people thought this, and I say this with the greatest respect, because we can say it now with the fact that what you've done this season and the goals and the assists, yeah. but there was almost like a bit of a, why did Chelsea want Anthony yeah, yeah. Gordon for this yeah. level of money? Why do, did you feel that that was the sort of perception at the time? I've got off quick five questions here, because to be fair, it feels like we're in that moment of discussing it, but did you get that feeling as well? Yeah. What, you know, that people, they must have spotted the potential that was there, but you never doubted that, did you, in terms of what you, no. what you were doing? Uh, that definitely was the perception. I remember like seeing a couple of things saying that, but I don't care about that. My self-belief is so strong and always has been. I don't know where I get it from, but it's been like that since a kid. So yeah. other people's opinions never mattered. But what I will say is they were probably right in what they were saying. If you look at me goal output at that time, yeah. I don't think it was good enough for the amount of money. But today's football, I think you're sort of paying for potential. When you say about that belief and you've always had it, where does that come from? I mean, to be fair, the city that you live in, you have to have belief, yeah. don't you? I think, you know, I always think when I go to Liverpool, yeah. the people have a real spirit and a, mm. a fight in them. Do, is that, is that, does it come from the city or the people you sort of grew up with? A million percent it comes from where, where I come from. Because you have to be really strong-willed and a strong character to, to survive there. Yeah. I think, and even stronger to sort of expand out and really progress in, in the yeah. world outside of Liverpool. So that definitely helps and... Like I said, I don't know where it comes from, but no matter what's happened in my life, I've never once doubted myself. You know, when I think of, sort of, say, a winger, I always think of them as being, or a forward player, actually, a young forward, I always think of them as being maybe a little bit erratic in the game, mm. a little bit erratic in the mind, a, yeah. bit, a bit more immature than defenders usually. Yeah. When I'm speaking to you, I like the feeling that almost like you're sort of quite methodical in your thinking. Yeah. Just the thing about sort of reading the books, the sort of picking up the sort of the leadership messages, is, is, would that be fair to say that you're massively into that? Very fair, that's what, honestly, my whole life is sort of like that. I'm into, like I said before, psychology, books, just constantly getting better. And I think people don't get that because you just think Liverpool, you're typical, typical Scouser. <laughs> I'm used to working next yeah. to a different sort of type of person from Liverpool. He's you know, not quite into psychology I didn't want to say it, no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, no, but I think the, word, the best word is probably a bit misunderstood, but yeah, I'm definitely, into all that stuff. It, it mesmerises me this because I actually to fair, interviewed Trent a few weeks ago and I think misunderstood's a really good word in yeah. terms of you have a perception of someone, don't you, of what they are, how yeah. they'll be. Yeah. And I'm here now with you for the first 15, 20 minutes that I've ever met you in my life and yeah. the articulate nature of how you sort of communicate, the determination, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have doubt, I can't doubt it, you played professional football at the highest level and what you're doing is unbelievable. But I would have thought it would be more instinctive than yeah. thought, thought out, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like I said to you before, I don't actually mind people having that perception. Yeah. Because I'm comfortable in myself to know that I just need the opportunity to meet you, yeah. to be able to change it. I know once people meet me and they be in my company that I can change it. And I think having a stereotype is not too... We're all human, we yeah, all do yeah. it. So I don't think it's a bad thing. And do you see yourself as being a potential captain? Do you see, I, it's too early for that, but do yeah. you see yourself as being someone who can inspire people or lead? I was speaking to me some, some close ones about this recently because I feel at my end calling after football may have something to do with that, whether that be through football, through management or down the psychology route. I think that may be Where you go? my end goal. I'm not too sure yet, but like I said, I'm, I'm so invested in that sort of stuff that it surely has to come to fruition at some point. Yeah. As a footballer, I'm more a lead by example rather than yeah. a big speaker or I'm yeah. a bit... Uh, You're quite quiet yeah, in the dressing room. Yeah, I'm very quiet in the dressing room. In terms of sort of how you prepare for a match, yeah. what, how do you prepare for a match then in terms of bringing those thoughts together to make sure that you're in that tunnel absolutely ready to go? So my preparation for a match will start two days before. I have like fully set, I mean, three days will be set out to the, the minute. I thought, was, I thought that was only me. No, no, that is me as well, honestly. Th Thursday night I would switch yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm fully switched on. I try not to think too much about the game, but it's more so I do a lot of meditation, uh, wow. visualisation, a lot of goals. Visualising what's going to happen in the game? Yeah, or? so that if a chance comes, I feel like I've already lived it. And all I have to do then is just be, be present and actually wow. trust me, trust me ability rather than overthink it. And in terms of what two days before you start visualising what the game is, is that your opponent as well, or is that just your particular game and what you're going to do? No, it'll be my opponent. Thinking about what they're going to do. Because I usually like. know what he's going to do, what, what his yeah. habits will be. If I'm playing against a full-back who's running, yeah. it's more so getting myself comfortable with, actually, if he doesn't want to around me, 
I'm going to put myself in that position of being tired and getting back now so that in the game it's a lot easier. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, but I'm trying to work out where this sort of deep thought and this... Mm. It's unbelievable, really. I'm amazed. In, in a, like in a good way. I mean, everyone thinks that football players turn up, it's quite instinctive, the coach, oh. they have to be instructed. Yeah. I don't think they ever think that there's that level of deep thought and preparation going into this level. Yeah, some footballers can do that. I just can't. I prefer to be my confidence come from my preparation. I don't know where it comes from because I wouldn't say anyone around me is is anything like no. that. They're not really into that stuff. But it's not come from sort of member of your family no, no. or come from a friend or coach. I couldn't say anyone around me is like that. I just love learning stuff, and throughout me me growing up years, I've I've took a sort of a liking to learning about psychology. The meditation and visualisation, what is that for you? It's not how you perceive it to be, where you're sat on the, <laughs> your legs crossed thinking, like yeah, this. I've just got this vision of you sort no, of like no. sat there, sort of it's like breathing. So, and... No. I was doing quick fire questions five minutes ago. I'm fucking on the longest, longest fire, quick fire in the world. I'm actually mesmerised in a way that I've never heard a football player talk actually with this level of sort of depth and thought and preparation. I don't think at any point in their career, let alone at sort of someone who's at your stage in your career. Yeah, there may be people who do the same thing. There probably, probably is loads who maybe just haven't spoke about it. But like I said, some footballers like to think less and just turn up and play and trust their instincts. But I just love the, like the mindset of getting myself in that place before I'm already there. Yeah. And I actually heard Salah talk about it. And that's where I took even more interest because right. I see him as an absolute machine, a winner. Yeah. And people like that, you're not going to go far wrong sort of following what they do. And I got to 25, 26 before I felt Unbreakable is the wrong word, but where I felt mentally strong enough to cope with everything. Yeah. Do you feel like you're already at that point now whereby I've got coping mechanisms to deal with anything that comes my way? So that's that's exactly what I'm trying to explain. It's more of a coping mechanism for how to handle sort of pressure of playing. And the, that's what the, the meditation, the visualisation just allows me to react from a higher perspective than my own emotions. Because being emotional... Yeah. It's not, no, it's not no the good. best. It's no, no I, I good always in say that. It's not. So, to talk to me then. The meditation and visualization. Yeah. I know what it is, obviously, but what is that for you? So, I, are you sat in a dark room? Are you sort of? Is there music? And what what is that setting like? It's not how you perceive it to be, where you're sat on the, <laughs> <laughs> your legs crossed I'm thinking, like yeah, this. Just like this vision of you sort no, of like no. sat there, sort of it's like breathing. So, and, no. No. It's just sitting in a room on your own, like no noise if possible, on a chair. Closing your eyes, getting in touch with your body through, through breathing and then just letting the, the game run. So I start arriving at the stadium, yeah. going into the warm-up, through the game and then ultimately trying to see how, one, how I want to feel after the game, does that make sense? So I try and get that feeling and then what I'm going to have to do in the game to achieve it. How do you sort of cope with during a game if what you visualised sort of hasn't happened or hasn't occurred? How, how, do, you, how do you deal with that? Because sometimes things happen in a yeah, game, yeah. don't they? You might get yeah. a red card, you might get a yellow card, you might, yeah. you might miss a chance. What, how would that sort of sit with you during a match? Mistake management in a match, if you like. Yeah. Well, that's the key to football, is how you react. To, it's key to life, how you react from mistakes. Yeah. So, for me, if I'm making mistakes, it's just about, again, forgetting my emotions, because your emotions try and lead you down one way. Yeah. And it's normally the wrong way. So it's trying to put them to one side, yeah. and just snapping back to actually what do I need to do where's my man and I yeah. do that for me, for me breathing and stuff right in the game yeah yeah right. so have you ever seen me sort of deep breathing now you know I'm thinking he looks knackered there, <laughs> no 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 <laughs> or maybe I am actually depends what full back I'm playing against and in terms I, I can imagine then that you know, again, as a, as, a, as a young football player, I would sort of watch some of my clips back after a game to sort of try and, you know, coach myself, what can I do better? Are you quite methodical in terms of your post-match yeah, yeah, yeah. assessment of what you've done? How does that look? I watch the game. Oh, you're, in the Euros. <laughs> you're not! <laughs> not running like that. <laughs> have you visualised scoring the winner in the Euros, I by am, the way? Actually, I have, I have, plenty of times. So I have to watch the game straight after the game. Well, you yeah, go yeah. watch the game? Yeah. Oh, 
God. We get it on our phones now, so it's not too, too All right, difficult. Okay, so send straight to your phone? Yeah, yeah. But it's just Is that more not so... quite sort of like intense? You want to re recover and re rest? Or do you... I can't sleep though. It's like I just remember all the, the bad things and the good things, but mostly the bad things, and it's just watching it and then seeing sort of why I've done it. Does that make sense? You're intense, aren't you? In I'm terms... Yeah, very Massively intense. intense. Yeah, me missus would tell, you, would tell you that, I think. So how are you at home then with your fiance? How would you be like to live with? I mean, I thought I was bad. I thought I was intense. Yeah, not, not to blow my own horn, but I think, again, keeping in line with the being present stuff, I think I'm very relaxed because as soon as I walk through the door, I just think to myself, football's gone and now I have to put them first. Now within that, I'll be focused on me hydration and like, yeah. she'll, she'll know the <laughs> yeah, certain yeah. parts of the evening where I have to just switch off or I'll Do be- Do you eat at a certain time? Yeah, yeah. So routine, <laughs> so routine, it's unbelievable. Would you like that? Yeah. I have to be like that. I mean, we, to be fair, me and my brother were sort of mocked for many years for, taking our food on the train or on the coach so we had we had yeah. to eat at a certain time yeah. day before a game two days before a game we had to yeah. eat the same foods it was I, if i didn't do i couldn't stand in the tunnel and think that i prepared for the game properly yeah it was almost like a, a routine i suppose almost like my preparation i yeah. know players have that yeah but i never i mean i, I switched on a thursday night i would start thinking about the game start thinking about the, the opponent but never to the levels that you're talking about mm. well i think like i said before your preparation there is giving you confidence in the game. Yeah. Because when it gets hard, you will end up relying on that. Yeah. So I'm the same, I'm so routined. We just went on holiday, got a couple of days off, so yeah. went to, to Spain. And even then, I'm, I have to eat at the same times, just because if the routine gets messed up, it, it kills me. Yeah. Do you assess your fitness stats after every game as well? Are you measuring that type of your game as well? What would you run per game, sort of total distance? Total distance wouldn't be anything crazy. It'd be around 11K. 11K. But my high speed running will be sort of 16, 1700, 1800, which is like very high. You know, I nine, think I got the fourth nine, highest. I think 900 was my sort of regular. But I'm a good sprinter though, that's what I'm good at. <laughs> so it'd be quite poor if I wasn't reaching them numbers. <laughs> so um, you, run, you sprint 1800 meters every game on average? I, I think on average I'd probably say 1600. Wow. But I think this year against Kyle Walker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 1800. Yeah, 1800. We went man for man. So I was like, sort of. So you were man marking, ba you were man marking, him, or he's man marking you. It, end, <laughs> it was meant to be him marking me, and it ended up the other way. Pep obviously made the adjustment to put him high, pull me right back. Right. And honestly, me and him were just racing up and down the line the whole game. The footy match was going on, and me and him were just running. <laughs> so I'm, I, I just think, I mean, I'll, I'll go back onto the quick fire questions, but I'm, I'm blown away really by the level of thought. I know you obviously you're a professional football player, so I know yeah. that to get to where you've got to, but I am blown away by the sort of. The, the depth of it, it's unbelievable. It's, it's I, I mean, be unique, I would reckon. <laughs> I've never said that before on um, like any media outlet or what things. What about the meditation so, and the yeah, visualization? Yeah, so I think it's good for people to hear as well. Yeah, I mean. Again, no one knows that side to me. I think the club are very understanding with how I am. So let's say I was standing there, you were at me. Yeah. If you ran just there. Yeah, either way, I feel like I'm quick enough to beat you, so <laughs> it thanks, doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> Right. I love it when conversations just completely. It's more natural, isn't it? Do you know what we do? Yeah. There? Oh, do you know something? We have like a thing, but I, I, I literally just have to go where I'm. Yeah. It's like... I think it's best. I love that, you know, the stick to football. Oh, it's, uh, I actually like the start of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just like you're just talking as you would. But it's like this now. I always say to them, film this. Yeah. It's the best conversation oh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But the stick to football, do you know, it partly comes from because I can't host, I can't present, mm. I just can't. So basically, I just said, look, just get the cameras rolling, and then I'll just go, right. Yeah, the right. Like, right. <laughs> you always do that, it's good. We should go back out. <laughs> <laughs> Does this actually, have they trusted us to come in here and not nick anything <laughs> out of that sort of sandwich and chocolate and stuff? Oh, so he's there. Sorry, right, mate. <laughs> 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 I'm thinking that's very trustworthy, that, just letting us have the door. Do you know what this reminds me of? Where does this remind me of where we've done the overlap before? Uh, Tyson Fury. Yeah, the exact same type cafe. The one with Tyson Fury? Yeah, you should I watch it. I watched that one. It's about two years old. 
It's quite good. It's a good one, isn't it? It's a good one. He talks a lot about um, mental health. Yeah, he was good. He, t- he rocked up. No one with him. He was in a what was he? What <laughs> car was he in? Ferrari. It was a Ferrari. He's, so you imagine Ferraris on yeah, the floor like years. this. He fucking gets out of it like this. Climbs out of it. Walks over. I want a coffee. So we had the coffee. And that was it. He just went off and on. And it was unbelievable, really. The thing with that sport, you almost have to be delusional in the fact that th- like this fella cannot knock me out. Do yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So you end up. Yeah. Same with McGregor. Yeah. You end up. Did you box when you were younger? Love boxing now still. Love boxing now. Yeah, if I do any training, I don't do weight training at all, ever. You don't do weight training? Never. Why is that? I just think... Can we shoot this? So why, 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 why don't you weight? Because I, I, I always thought, I always thought when, I was, when I was coaching with England, I mean, we weight train, but then when I was with England, the lads seem to have programmes that yeah. train. What, why? The lads at the club do do it. I just... One, my game is not really reliant on it. And I just think... We do enough running, add an actual weight onto your muscles and, and the, your body, it's just going to put you under more stress, yeah. resulting in more chance of injury. Do you think it would Not take away some of your agility, like the way yeah. in which you're sort of nimble? Do you think it would take away some of that, getting a bit bulkier? Yeah, it'd probably make me stronger. I'd probably yeah. actually get quicker, more explosive. Yeah. But with sort of, you know, I might get more injury, so it's not worth that end result for me. Again, that's like a... What that says to me is one that you're sort of taking charge of your own sort mm. of program because yeah. most players, including myself, you know, you train, you be told what to do, you say right, you're in the gym for your weights, yeah. and we all trod off, we all yeah. get our pro- we all get yeah. our program, yeah. and we have to do what we're told to do. So what happens at the end of the session when the players trod off, you know, go into the gym and sort of what do you say? No, it's not me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. not doing that. exactly that. I just I go for lunch in my food. I think the club are very understanding with how I am. Yeah. Because physio treatment and gym, I don't, I don't go in the gym or I don't go in the treatment. I just do what I need to do. I do a lot of stretching, a lot of yoga, a lot of that side of yeah. sort of the gym. Yeah. But actual weight and um, treatments, not for me. When you say treatments, you mean like sort of back stretching or manipulation or yeah. sort of like that type of stuff with treatments? Yeah. So some lads are in there every morning, like getting flushes or getting a back stretch. Oh, you massage? You don't have massages? None. None. <laughs> the only thing I do is stretch. I stretch before training, after training, and that's it. What did you do for recovery then after a game? I do a lot of recovery. I'd say that's more, my gym stuff is more recovery based. Right. So I do a lot of what bike, the normal tech, the squeeze your legs, yeah, yeah. if you've seen them. Yeah. Love an ice bath. Yeah. Um, and pool and stretch, yeah. So it's more sort of flexibility and just get my legs in a good place rather than trying to add to it. So what, what would Eddie say? Is that Eddie that would say, yeah, he's OK, he doesn't need to do Because what, what would the senior players, what would the, what would the rest of the players think? Because mm. I'd be like, if it was me, I'm going in the gym, and I'm thinking, no, we're all going in the gym. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'd, I'd yeah. naturally think that. Yeah. Although I have to say, Skulls didn't go in the gym. I don't think that much. Thinking didn't need it, did he? <laughs> he's just pinging balls. <laughs> I'm just everywhere. remembering, actually, he's outside pinging balls, actually, on the pitch. But I'm thinking, yeah, maybe he didn't go in the gym that much. That's another thing. A lot of the time when the session finishes and th- some lads will go in the gym, um, I stay out all the time, just finishing or doing extra bits, usually because I just feel like I'm yeah. training's ended too quickly and I'm not ready to go in. So that's another part of it. But like I said before, the gaffer and the, the, the gym staff, yeah, yeah, they're, they're firing me, doing what, it. But you sat down and gone through with them and said, this is why I don't want to do it. Yeah, they know I don't like it. They know I just like to do what, what makes me feel good. And, you know, this season I've, I've been injury-free, yeah. touch wood. So, you know, it's worked. I mean, I think to fair United, there was a massive culture of staying out after and working yeah. on the thing individually that you needed to work on. So for me, it could be my head and it could be 1v1 defending. What, what are you sort of at the moment, sort of when you're out on the training pitch after training, you're doing that individual one-on-one, what are you doing? Mm. That's, well, what, what part of your game are you improving? What, what are you thinking at the moment is the one thing? I always do around the box, finishing and crosses. Right. But as the season's gone on, so now I'm, I'm cutting in and I'm, I've scored a couple of goals. Yeah. Now I feel like defenders are reading it. Right. So I'm finding ways now, maybe a little feint or a skill move. To go back on the outside again. Yeah, or even a chop to go again. Yeah. And I've done it in the past couple of matches and the gaff has been really pleased with me, to be fair, because he's like, actually, you've been working on that. Yeah. And I'm quite innovative and thoughtful, yeah. so I bring it to him a lot of the time. But of course, yeah. he brings a lot to me as well. But on the pitch, I know what, what could work. So I'm just... 
trying on things, trying to get better. So, would I be right in saying that your best, your favoured position, because obviously you play all across the front line, yeah. you, know, you, you even play number 10, but would you say that off the left is the place where you think that's where I'm most comfortable? <sighs> most not? comfortable, yeah. But I think it probably depends who you ask. A lot of people prefer me in all different places because they've seen me play striker, yeah. left, right, 10, left, 8. I've actually played at some yeah. point. I played number 9 in the Euros for England. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. Yeah. But I'd say left probably makes Off you feel left. the most comfortable. So you're running at me. Now, when I played right back, which is mm. quite a long time ago now, the majority of players, 99% of the players I played against were left footed. Yeah. And when I played against a right footed player, I always used to feel more comfortable. Really? I, yeah, I always used to feel more comfortable. Like Robert Perez was a right footed yeah, yeah. left winger. Yeah. I, not, he was a brilliant player, but I used to think, well, he's, just gonna, he's always going to go back inside. So mm. I'd almost wait for him. Yeah. And say, I know he's never going to go there. He's not. I can't visualise him crossing it with his left foot. Even if you think yeah, of yeah. Robert Perez now, yeah. are you in that moment? Or are you in this moment now thinking about how you sort of that go that way? Because they'll show you that yeah, way, yeah. and then you can get that left foot crossing, or, or even it. Is that what you're working on a lot at the moment? Yeah, and I'll, I play sort of on what he gives me. So if he's going to block the line because he thinks I'm quick, then I'll go inside. Yeah. And vice versa, if he, if he blocks inside, then I'll just take him the line. But also, it's the little things where it's like, go inside one, two, and then I'm taking him the line. Yeah. So it's just constantly different ways of trying to beat him. It's not just one v one direct all the time. It's trying to link with other people. What was most difficult for me when a, when a player was running at me, was let's say I was standing there, you were running at me, is yeah. if you ran directly just there. Yeah. I always say, run directly there. Yeah. Because at some point, I'm thinking... You have to stick that leg yeah, yeah, and it's like that one, or I'm going... And it's like sometimes it, sometimes I think wingers make it easy <clears throat> yeah. for a fullback because they'll go there too early, or they'll go there too early. So if yeah. you chop it inside too early, I can just go like that. Yeah. But if you take it right up close to my leg here, I, I'm, I'm sure... And you do that quite a bit. You, mm. you aim for that leg, don't you? You really direct and go for people, don't you? Yeah, so that's another thing. My angle of approach on a 1v1... A lot of it is the same, where I think if I come at you on your left leg, left leg, yeah, you're either going to have to commit to one side at some point, yeah, and then it's how fast can I react to that, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And either way, I feel like I'm quick enough to beat you, so <laughs> it thanks, doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> I've just shown you inside. To all of, I've just shown you, you inside. On. I've just shown you inside to all of the bodies. <laughs> I've, I've stayed with the left back that's overlapping. That's what happens a lot, to be honest. <laughs> No, but it, it, it fascinates me in terms of sort of, you're on 10 goals, Premier League. Yes. Eight assists. Yeah. Where do you want to get to? I mean, it's, it's a silly question, really, mm. but it's, where do you see, because obviously you look at numbers now and everyone seems to measure numbers yeah. and you're hitting really good numbers. Where would you like those numbers to be in the future? It's difficult, really, because I've, as much as I do love goal setting, I've never really put a set number on goals because, let's say, I put 10 at the start of the year. Yeah. If I get to 10 now, I want it to 15, so yeah. it just never stops, and I don't think you can put a goal on it. I just want to keep keep doing the things leading up to the goal, yeah. which results in the goal, and that's the important thing. But I think to be a top winger, numbers do matter. Yeah. It's all that matters nowadays. So you're talking like 15, 10, 15 goals, 10 assists, if you want to be a top player, I think, on a consistent basis, as a minimum. Yeah. Eddie's so relentless, so putting that much pressure on you to succeed. I belong here, this is my level. I don't think I've ever met a young player that's as openly ambitious as you are. Have you always been like that? Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying this episode. This is just a quick thank you to Skybet, our partners, for making this show happen. It's something I've wanted to do for a long, long time. Please subscribe, there's loads more episodes coming up and I hope you're enjoying it. Talk to me about England. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I, I've always said I just needed that that in to get in because getting into the squad is so hard yeah. because of the players they've got in there. I've always just wanted that opportunity to show what I could do because I'm comfortable in myself to know in that environment. Yeah. I feel like I'll do well. And I felt like that was the case. I felt so comfortable there. And when I got there, I was actually, I belong here. This is, this is my level. It's interesting that because I used to think that the first <coughs> training session, if there's a new player comes in, everyone's watching. It's obviously some yeah, guys know you. Definitely. They're all watching yeah. you thinking, Can, you yeah. know, is, no, you is, what's he like? You know yeah. what I mean? Did you yeah. feel in that first training session straight away, you thought, right, okay, I feel comfortable? 
yeah, but I didn't really care. Like, I was so on it. I was so just determined to do well that session because, like you said, it's football and yeah. we're human. Everyone would be looking at the new lads coming in. It's true, though. You, you, you have, I mean, people think, obviously, <coughs> that you've got to impress yourself, but you have got to impress your teammates, haven't you, as well? Yeah. You, you know, you're going in there, there's 20 odd other players. Mm. You, there is that pressure on you to impress them and yeah. make them feel like, oh, wow, you know what I mean? It's... You have to earn respect. That's the biggest thing in football, or it's an opinion based sport. No one's going to respect you if, yeah. if you don't earn the respect. But it's a pride thing if you can prove to yourself and feel comfortable in yourself, everyone's opinion will yeah. sort of align with yours. And you mentioned, obviously, like the competition. You're in, a, you're in a part of the pitch where, obviously, Phil Foden can play, Marcus Rashford can play, Jack Grealish can play. Mm. I'll probably just name three. There's probably yeah, four or five. Yeah. Do you have an edge in the sense that you can play all across mm. the front line? Some, I mean, some of them can yeah, as yeah, well, yeah. but you yeah. can play, sort of like, say, eight, you can play nine, you yeah. can play, obviously, on the left, and you can play on the right. Do you think that's something that will be a factor that could go your way. Obviously, Gareth's got to pick a squad in the next month or two. I think so. I think versatility in a tournament yeah. is massive. Like you said, a lot of them lads can do that as well, but I feel like I've done it a lot this year, especially in big games, and I think that matters. I've done it in big games where I've played out of position and still performed. Yeah. What's um, out of position? So Centre well, forward? Would you yeah, centre forward. On the right, even probably yeah. out of position because the left is probably my main position. Yeah. I've played number 10 sometimes. I know proven in big games that I can, no matter where I play, I can still perform. Yeah. Having that trust from the manager and, and the players around me, I think that's a massive thing. What's the hardest part for you of playing centre forward? Definitely back to goal. Back to goal, yeah. having it played into from distance. Yeah. yeah. Because obviously, my build is not, I'm not built for that. But playing there with, the, with England and then sometimes this year, I've found ways to. Manipulate that so I'm coming off more on an angle, angle yeah. rather than straight down the line. Yeah. And I found that because I'm quick, defenders don't really want to. If I come off on an angle, they don't really want to engage. Yeah. Because one, one, two, and I'm in. Yeah. It only took me a couple of games, and I started thinking, actually, let me try this, let me try that, and my understanding of the game got got even better. What do you find when you're with England? What was the sort of? Because uh, uh, obviously, I played with England for many years, and the, the spirit was talked about a lot as being a potential issue. But the, the spirit in the last five, six years, Gareth's mm create an environment of and a great culture did you yeah. find that when you went in there that was the most surprising thing because like I said before I knew I would do well on the pitch off the pitch I was nervous of course like you would be yeah. You're going to meet a load of new people even shaking hands at yeah first exactly meet it's, it's, like, it's, awkward, it's awkward isn't it yeah and, or you think it's gonna be yeah and honestly it wasn't right the culture they've managed to create the staff is so impressive and me, Cobby and Jared yeah. all said the same thing. They were like, actually, like, the lads are lovely, the staff are lovely. Yeah. The staff go out the way constantly to make sure you, You're okay. you feel like you've been there for ages. Yeah. And that definitely helped me in the comp. Did, did you feel like that when you came to Newcastle and started mm. working with Eddie? Yeah, the lads were class. Helped me settle in really quickly, but Eddie's so relentless. So the, the first part is actually harder, harder because He's putting that much pressure on you to succeed and get you to where he needs you to be. The demands are big. Yeah, demands are massive. Work ethic. And, yeah. yeah. Like every session, if you daydream it for one second, some, he somehow manages to see it. And he's like screaming your name. You're like, oh. So it's definitely two different approaches, but both work. And ultimately, like I said, Eddie's were hard at the start, but they got me to where I am now. You made a big decision, and I say to leave the, the city, the club where you have grown up, mm. and, and that city as well, which is passionate about, you're passionate yeah, about yeah. Liverpool, you, you, you know, it's, it's a city that's great, it's strength, it's yeah. spirit, it's passion, it's, it, it's determination, and it's togetherness. So to actually leave there for yeah. a local ad, I, I, I would say it's probably tougher than any other city in the UK. How was that for you at the time, in terms of just, obviously, you, you received a relentless amount of sort of attention, scrutiny, yeah. whatever you want to call it, mm. How was it? Because obviously, I know you're mentally strong, we've talked about that outside, but was the points where you think, this is getting difficult? Yeah, the whole process was difficult, but I think you said I'm mentally strong, but I think that's played a massive part in me being, being who I am now. now. Yeah, so I'm very thankful, but it was so hard at the time. Like you said, Liverpool's biggest unity is everyone being together, sort of scousers looking after scousers, and for someone to leave that environment, it's not, no not one's going to like it, do you know what I mean? And, and rightly so. But ultimately, I'm too ambitious to, to turn down the opportunity that was presented to me. 
Newcastle only going one way. And looking from the outside, they were absolutely flying. I think they were fourth when I was, yeah. you know, just signing. So it's a no-brainer. Uh, my ambition is to be at the very top of football, wherever that looks like. And I couldn't do that where I was. And how it ended didn't have to be like that, did it really? No. Just the statement was a bit... I don't, I don't even know what you'd call the statement that they put out, to be honest with you. It was uh, small. You know, it was almost as if they were playing to the crowd. You know, Anthony wants to leave, we've let him go, but yeah. you're almost a bit like that, discarding you a little bit. And obviously you at the time were getting a lot of criticism. Mm. Why, why, it didn't have to be like that, did it, surely? No, it definitely didn't. But Sounds like they needed the money as well, looking at it as yeah, well. Yeah, that's the thing. A lot of what you see on the media is, is club-driven and I didn't really care too much to change the perspective because I'm very comfortable in myself and how it ended and ultimately I got what I wanted. I joined Newcastle. I did want to leave, but also the club did, did have to sell me. Yeah, the way it played out was like I was desperate to leave and I was, yeah. it was never really the case. I just wanted to fulfil my ambitions and ultimately, yeah. yeah, never bothered too much about wanting to change people's minds. If, if they believe what, what they read, that's fine by me. It's interesting because I, I listen to you talk now and I think that there's a perception that young people were stronger, were more determined, they worked harder 25 mm. years ago or 40 years yeah. ago. And I often sort of disagree with that because when I speak to sort of, when I see footballers, when I speak to you today, one, we wouldn't have been able to speak like this in an interview yeah. at your age, mm. just wouldn't. It's yeah. a fact. You know, I'm in the media now, but at the age of, sort of your age, I would never have been able to do that. And also, your ambition and what you've done takes great courage. I don't think players back then would have found it as easy to do that. Yeah. Do you feel that sort of inner strength and spirit that nothing's going to stop me on this journey? I'm going, I'm going where I'm going and, and I'm going to get to where I'm going to get to. Yeah, uh, similar to what I was, I was telling you before. I've, I don't know where it comes from, but I've had that since a kid, since I was four or five years old when I was rolling with the ball. Nothing's ever been able to knock me off my path. I've got one goal and one purpose and nothing will ever get in the way of that. I'd agree that young players today, they're exposed to more, so of course we're going to be mentally stronger at a younger age. And like you said before, we're probably better in interviews because we have to do them earlier. Yeah. So that's no sort of shame on the players yeah. of past generations, but I think we're just exposed to more through social media and stuff. So, yeah, we'll take the positives from that, though. Right, question six. <laughs> <laughs> quick fire. Back to the quick Bye. fire. Favourite sport aside from football? NFL, no question. NFL? Yeah, well, absolutely love me. it. We had JJ Watt on. I know, I watched it. You watch it? I'm halfway through it, but I've watched the start. I was buzzing when you had him on. Yeah. Just a little change up. Yeah, cause Roy's a big fan of him. Of, yeah, yeah. Of, of, of he NFL. likes the NFL, doesn't so he? Where did that come from then? Just sort of self taught me way through knowing how the game works. Right. It probably started with players, so looking at players and they have big profiles and followed it through that, and then now I'll probably tell you anything you want about it. Wow, so you're into it properly. Yeah, into massively, it. yeah. Jeez. Football hero growing up? Gerard. Steven Gerard. Yeah. Coming from Liverpool, he was, yeah. he's like a god in Liverpool. Good Very player. Simple. Excellent. Top Unbelievable player. player. Which defender you dread coming up against? None. None? No. Any that you think it's going to be a hard day to Yeah, on? Kyle Walker. He, every time, just because I know it's just constantly going to be a hard game. I think dread, I wouldn't say dread because. I look forward to the, the competition yeah. and I actually look forward to them games the most. That's usually when I perform my best, but I, yeah. there's other part of me that thinks a lot of running involved here. I think that's, you know, obviously I watch Kyle a lot and he's played in my position. I think, I wish I'd just had an ounce of his pace. Yeah, well, it's maybe, scary, isn't it? Yeah. You can't really knock it past him and beat him for pace because he's no. got a three yard start on you yeah. anyway. How do you look at an opponent that's strong, he's rapid, yeah. he's experienced? How would you look at that and think, how do I win this duel against him? Hmm. Well, first of all, I'd, I'd look at the mental side of it and try and beat him psychologically. How, what it, would that be? As with? in, if he's running past me forward ways and I've got to run back, I will match him so that he knows as well as me he's in a tough game, yeah. regardless of you know, if I play well or not, he's going to have a yeah. hard game. So that side of it plays into it. But also, it's just figuring out ways to beat different players. Obviously, you can't look past them, so yeah. one twos. Off balance, maybe, take him off balance. He, he plays very high yeah. because of the way they play, yeah, so yeah. it's catching him in that, that transition. Yeah. Against City, you don't get many moments, so it's just about picking him yeah. at the right times. 
If you weren't a footballer, what would you be? Oh, honestly, football's always been... Yeah. It's just always been like a ton of vision. I think it'd be easy for me to say, it definitely wouldn't have been the case, but now I'd probably go into the psychology of sports, or maybe even people, but definitely yeah. along them lines. But as a kid, it definitely wouldn't have been that. Best friend in football? I'd say I've got three. Curtis Jones, Tommy Doyle, Elliot Anderson. Mixed bag there, some club oh. international. So where's so Curtis Jones International? Yeah, Tommy as well. Tommy International. Elliot Club. E Elliot Anderson. I watched him quite a bit when he was at, mm. Chris, at Bristol Rovers, you know. He was yeah. some player, by the way, there. Yeah, he is. He's top player. He's done well he's in Newcastle. Yeah, he's, he's, he's done really well, on, but he's, he's just, as a young player, he's just finding his feet within, yeah. within the games. He's been top in training for a while, Yeah. but he's just finding his feet. So three best mates. I wish I could Good name lads. three. Winner in a cup final for Newcastle or score with England at a major tournament? That's a hard one, oh isn't it? Because you either have to upset hard. your country or your fans. I always think they're a bit difficult then. Based on the question, I'm going to go with a Newcastle goal. For the winner. I think when we win a trophy here, it's going to be absolutely crazy. Yeah. And I think that team will forever be legends within the club. But if it was to score a winner in the <laughs> <For> Euros, <England. laughs> the answer changes. But just, I like the way you say that, when we win a trophy with Newcastle, yeah. you're absolutely sure you're going to. Mm. Yeah. yeah, one million percent. Honestly, I, I felt like we would this year. Yeah. But our cup draws were... Yeah, absolutely tough. Mental. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we come, I actually thought it was a bit of banter <laughs> at the end of it. When we got City in the last one, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right, best goal you've ever scored? I'd probably say the City one. City? Yeah. Just the magnitude of it. They were winning. Yeah. It was to sort of retake the lead at St. James's. Yeah. I might have missed one out there, but that was my favourite one. <laughs> Biggest phobia? I'd probably say spiders. I don't have a phobia, but I don't really like them. No. Spiders. No, I don't think I am a fan of spiders. <laughs> karaoke, do you sing? Karaoke song? All. Possibly no. the worst singer to ever live. If I was going to go, I would go Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Just because I do that, I'm mean initiation songs. <laughs> so. Where do you initiation <laughs> so, songs? At Newcastle, or do you have them with England as well? No, he didn't do them in England, thank God. Uh, yeah. But I've done them at Newcastle. Newcastle. Done them at who's, lead, who's leading that at Newcastle saying you've got to get up and do initiation? Tinners. So it's a a staff member, right? and he absolutely loves anything along them lines where it's a bit of a banter, he loves it. Favourite food, cheat meal? Chinese. Oh, I'm Chinese Yeah, well. Chinese. You oh, cannot I, go wrong, I'm after off on tonight, you know. When I get back to Manchester. Chinese oh, is Oh, God. Right, most famous name in your phone book? Frank Lampard. Yeah? Yeah, it's a big dog, isn't he? Yeah, big, yeah. Big name, <laughs> famous name. Best and worst subject at school? Best. Struggling there. PE. <laughs> Why does every footballer say PE? Hey, we all We're say all PE. Same, I got honestly. A and PE. We all, all get A. Uh, We're science. Science. No head. good. No, no. Too much. Three dream guests to have at dinner. I love this question, you know, and I've always got answers, and now I'm on the spot. <laughs> I go Maradona. I would go Donald Trump. Is that just for the weirdness? Just for like, pure, just, like, what? I'd just love to meet him and see how he is. Yeah, that like bizarre. Like, he's so bizarre as a person. Yeah. I just want to just wanna sit down with him and, yeah. I'd like Ricky to see, Gervais. I'd like to see Maradona and Ricky Gervais with Donald Trump That'd be as good. well. Imagine that. And then me. <laughs> you've, and put, me. you've put a cocktail <laughs> of, like... I actually the like craziest three people ever. Yeah. That'd be Ricky some... Gervais is a big one. I don't yeah. know why I haven't put him first. I absolutely love him. Yeah, I think I'd like to see so that, funny. didn't I? Um, best piece of advice you've ever been given? Best bit of advice was from Leighton Baines. He said it to me very young. I was about 16, 17 and everything. And he said, never get too high, never get too low. And I always remembered yeah. it. I, think, I don't even think he said it in like a... Advice way. Yeah, I think he just said yeah. it and I took it with me. I've always it's good it. advice, that. Yeah. Good advice. Your favourite boxer? Right now? Canelo. Love boxing. Did you box when you were growing up? Because every, I played, obviously, Carrigan now. Yes, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm not stereotyping just, by just, any stretch of hey. imagination. But the yeah, <laughs> first thing we have to do is be able to defend ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Rooney's boxer, Carragher's a boxer, he's still yeah. going into the gym now. Yeah. Even on the overlap interview I do with him, he takes me into the gym. Yeah. So you must have gone to a gym or you must have... Yeah, it's just a natural thing. As a, as a kid growing up in Liverpool, you just go to the gym with your mates yeah. and box. I'm very good at boxing still to this day. And I do a lot of boxing. Because we used to do boxing mm. training after, after to go in the gym. Yeah. For like, oh, I used to like it. I used to like it for, for a full back. Yeah. We're quite embarrassing this. Do you know what, <laughs> the, the movements of like, you know, like jockey, you know, yeah, a, a bit feet, embarrassing, but you know, just, just there, your feet. Yeah. 
It's good not for so much for a winger. Does that is that needed as much? But for a, for a full back, it's absolutely essential that idea of in and out. For me, it's more the conditioning of it, and I, I'm obviously very Condition, interested yeah. in boxing. So just on like recovery days, yeah, it's not that hard for me. Boxing's not hard for you. No, not, not on my legs anyway. Okay, it's good for the upper body, but yeah, I love to box. Tell me something about yourself that no one knows. I think I've just told you loads out there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that's the biggest thing. It's probably the meditation stuff. Yeah, because I think. The stereotype of a young scouse lad. You would no. never would have imagined that in a million years. No. Not that it shocked me. I suppose mm. in some ways it's a case that you... I wouldn't have expected you to come with that... You know, to, yeah, yeah. To, I wouldn't have expected you to prepare mm. for a football match in such a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I used to think of wingers, particularly young wingers, as being more instinctive mm. and not as well thought out. You know, that's just the nature of sort of like the, the winger and the sort of mentality of them. Yeah. And the book, when I was... On England, I was reading a book on the coach, and Mathers was like, Scousers don't read books, do they? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the books as well. We need to get Mathers on this podcast. It sounds like you fit right in with me. <laughs> Scousers don't read books. <laughs> uh, like a genius for that one. Right, last question. Last minute penalty to save your life. Who's taking it? Me. You're on it? Yeah. I put my life in no one else's hands. No way. Not Harry Kane? No, not me. You're on? Yeah. I'm right. a very good penalty taker as well. Don't get to take many because we've got Alex at the minute who can't miss. Yeah. But I'm good at pens. So we've talked a lot today about visualisation. Yeah. And I'm not throwing you forward five years because I think that's probably too far into the future. But where, where are you in your head in three years? What are the big ambitions in your career? Well, I want to win trophies first and foremost. I think that's everyone's dream. I think that goes without saying. But individually, I want to be at the very top. Whatever that looks like, I probably couldn't tell you right now. But I think that comes with winning trophies, constantly scoring, constantly assisting, and running the way I do. Running's a massive part. Because usually if I, if I run a lot, I play well. But I want to be right to the very top. I don't think I've, I've met a young player. Every young player's ambitious, but I don't think I've ever met a young player that's as openly ambitious mm. as you are. Yeah. And have you always been like that? I think so. I'd like to think so. It's like always, a determination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I said to you before, my confidence has never wavered since I was a kid. And again, it probably comes from where I come from. But yeah, I'm not, I don't mind telling people where I want to get to. I, f I actually like doing it because I feel like it puts more pressure on me to do it. If that makes sense. Yeah. Public no, pressure. I'm just thinking, I know, and I've, I've said this before, so it's not something I make. Yeah. Day of the Euro 2004, quarter final versus Portugal. Mm. Rooney's first tournament is 18 and I'm a little bit sort of like thinking it's a big game you know yeah, yeah. it wasn't my first tournament I'd played in a few but there's a tension there and I had a bit of a tension sometimes on the day of a game not not nervous or anxious or anything but just a bit like you felt like I said you know are you okay Waz he went oh, I can't wait can't yeah. wait and you're the I have to say I've not heard a confidence and self-belief because that that blew me away that day in terms of thinking hang on this is massive for an 18 year old to cope with this it's actually the first time I've spoken to a young player since that day where I felt the same level of confidence. That's good. I can't go wrong with him. <laughs> if I'm anyway like Rooney. But yeah, I've, I've always been like that. I, the biggest games is when I'm, I'm at my best. Yeah. Because I don't look at it as in a negative at all. It's just a chance for me to be who I want to be, who I think of myself as. So it's just the opportunity for me to go and be who I want to be. Look forward to it. Well, I absolutely love that conversation. It wasn't what I was expecting mm. at all. I wasn't expecting there to be that level of depth and thought and seriousness. And you you have to be serious to be a professional yeah. football player. I never underestimate the work that has to go in for you to be where you are today, playing at the level you're playing at. But sometimes I think lads get there and they don't know how they've got there. Yeah. They've just played football a lot yeah, yeah. and they've listened and they've to coaches and they've got good at it. But I feel like you've sort of thought every step of the way where you're going and how you're getting there and what you're doing with it, yeah. which is unbelievable. No, well you. done to Thanks you. Well much. done. Thank well you. done.